friends, in today's video we will be talking about problem on doubly reinforced concrete beam. I will be explaining the steps of how to design a doubly reinforced concrete beam with an example. So let's look into the example now. Design a reinforced concrete beam rectangular cross section using the following data. Effective span is equal to 8, and 8 meter. Thank God. L effect is directly given to us so we don't have to calculate it separately. Imposed life load that is LL is equal to 30 kN per meter. Overall depth is restricted to 650 mm. Use M20 and FA415 concrete. Now, when a question is given to you, like in DCS, like this, a design question is given to you, what's the first thing you have to do? Obviously, we would type down or write down the given details. So, the given details is L effective is 8 meter, L live load is 30 kN per meter. Overall depth is 650 mm. Characteristic strength of concrete is 20 newton per mm square. Characteristic strength of steel is 450 newton per mm square. Okay, now let's calculate effective depth right after giving details. When it be, we first of all we have to calculate how much uh, depth it has to be. Uh, it is constructed right. So we calculate the depth here. Overall depth is directly given to us. So we assume an effective cover of 50 mm in mostly concrete beams because we have to have a strong cover so we assume a cover of 50 mm overall depth being 650 and we calculate effective depth how is uh, in the next slide assume an effective cover of 50 mm like I mentioned before an effective depth is overall depth minus the effective cover and we get 600 mm now we calculate effective width. We know the formula on how to calculate effective width when depth is calculated or given to us directly. B is equal to 1 by 3 to 1 by 2 into D. For, for B it is single reinfo singly reinforced or doubly reinforced. The effective width formula is this 1 by 3 to 1 by 2 into D. And it has that means the value that we assume should be in the range of 200 to 300. Keep in mind the uh, In doubly reinforced beams, it has to be more than 200 meter. But it's not mentioned about doubly reinforced beams. I'll explain it later why we will be consider considering doubly reinforced beams here in this question. Effective width is 250 mm. I assume effective width is 250 mm. Now we calculate effective span. But effective span is directly given to us. So L effective is equal, is, is equal to 8 meter. Now we calculate the ultimate load, that is the load imposed on it, we calculate the depth, width and the effective span is directly given to us. Next is the load imposed on it, we have light load, we need to calculate the total load and the, with, with that we will get the ultimate load. So first we calculate the self weight, rho PD, that is dead load, rho B in the overall depth and we get 4.0625 kN per meter. Live load is given, total load is the sum of these two, that is 34.0625 kN per meter. We multiply total load with FOS, that is 1.5, and we get W is equal to 50, WU is equal to 51.093 kN per meter. Okay guys, we found the ultimate load. Now, when load is imposed on, obviously there will be a moment there, right? So, what's the next thing we have to calculate? Calculate moment of resistance MU and MU limit. Here, MU for UDL since live load is acting on it is a tensile load and load is uniformly distributed obviously in the beam. So, WL effective square by 8 that is the formula of moment for UDL, and after substituting, we get 408.744 kN meter. After that, we calculate MU limit by FCK BD square, which is equal to 0.138 for FE415 steel, and we get MU limits value. Now, when you see this, that MU is greater than MU limits, so the section is re over reinforced. Usually, in singly reinforced beams, we have to increase the depth, right? But here it's already 600. If you increase it, you have to get a, great, get a value greater than 650, right? But here in the question is mentioned the depth is restricted. To 650 mm so we can't increase the depth whenever the section is over reinforced either we increase the depth or we design it as a doubly reinforced beam since, since we can't increase the depth here we'll design it as a doubly reinforced beam since it is the doubly reinforced beam after we calculate the moment next thing 
we calculate is area of steel right AST when we calculate AC is actually the total tensile reinforcement here so but the reinforcements are not only provided in the tension region here it is also provided in the compression region as well so what's the so we have to calculate the area of steel like of uh, compression reinforcement also right so next step is calculation of area of compression reinforcement the formula is ASC required is equal to MU minus MU limit divided by FSC into D minus D dash. Don't worry, this uh, formula is in the IS code Annex G of page 96. And FSC, to calculate FSC, there are two formulas. First is XU limit minus D dash by XU limit into 0 0.0035 into ES, where ES is the uh, elastic moduli of steel which is 210 raised to 5 and XU limit is the maximum uh, neutral depth we can calculate XU limit by the formula XU limit by D oh and other formula is F is equal to 0.7 FY so these are the two formulas that you have to keep in mind to calculate XU limit if when we are using the first formula we know that x u limit by d is equal to 0 0.48 this is uh, given in the note the values for x u limit by d is a ratio uh, value varies for each grade different grades of steel here you are using is in fe 415 so we will the ratio value is 0 0.48 so the code is is the code uses is 456 and it's in clause 38.1 in page 70 and that's how we get the XU limit value and we substitute in, in FSC formulas and take the minimum value. Okay guys, XU limits value is equal to 0.4600 which is equal to 288 mm. Elastic modulus for steel is throughout. It's 210 raised to 5 Newton time and as well as like I mentioned before. FSC is equal to we substitute the values and we get 578.472 Newton per minute square. That is the first formula. Second formula FSC is equal to 0.875, that is 361.05 Newton per m square. We take the minimum value and we get 361.05 Newton per m square as FSC's value. Now we find AC required, we substitute FSC's value and we get 807.44 mm square. Then we assume 5 is equal to 20 mm. We find the number of bars. Number of bars will be equal to 3. Then we find ASC provided. Obviously for tensile reinforcement, we found provided area, right? So for same thing for compression reinforcement as well. Next we calculate the area of steel reinforcement. That is total. Here we use the formula AST is equal to AST plus 1 plus AST 2. AST1 is the formula used in the tension region and AST2 is the uh, we attain AST2 by using the formula of compression reinforcement hence we find the total uh, steel reinforcement area so we have XU limit with us right so we can substitute we know formula XU limit by D is equal to 0.87 FY AST by 0.36 FCKB uh, FCKB into D. We can cut off D and we uh, write it, write the XU limit formula in the form of AST's formula and we substitute it in AST1 that is 0.36 FCKB into XU limit by 0.87 FY plus. Uh, it's given in the code AST2's uh, formula AC provided plus F FSC by 0.87 FY. We substitute the values and we get the total area reinforcement that is 2380.287 mm square. Okay, guys, we'll assume a diameter of 20 mm after after we find the required area. We have to find the area provided, right? So we assume a diameter of 20 mm. Number of bars is AST required by area of one bar, which we get as eight. Usually, it's, uh, the number of reinforcements has to be at least till six. It should not be more than six. So here, the number of bars is more than the reinforcement that can be placed in the tension zone. 
let's assume the diameter of the bar to be 25 mm then let's increase the diameter since it's more number of bars we get is 4.849 uh, that means we got 5 here we now we can find out the area provided ASD provided is equal to number of bars into area of one bar 5 into pi by 4 into 25 square and we get 2454.36 mm square which is uh, greater than AC required hence it is safe now let's check the minimum reinforcements check out for minimum and maximum reinforcement reinforcement in the tension zone since uh, compression zone is also compression region is also coming into play here we will check the tension, uh, tension region as usual AST minimum AST by BD which is equal to 0.85 by 5 which is given in the code AST minimum we substitute and we get 307.228 mm square then we find AST max that is 6500 mm square hence it is uh, it satisfies the condition hence it is safe now reinforcement in the compression region AST max is equal to 0 0.04 BD which is 6500 mm square it also satisfies the condition hence it is safe next we design the shear reinforcements we find the shear force uh, since it is simply assumed to be uh, simply supported the shear force uh, formula is w into l by 2 that here w uses total load since we are finding the actual shear force and we get 113,600 1,36,250 newton ultimate shear force we multiply with FOS and we get 2,4375 Newton then we find the nominal shear stress so that is the stress acting upon the beam VU, tau V is equal to VU by BD and we get 1.3625 Newton per mm square we use interpolation method here which is between two values from table 19 and we get tau c is equal to 0 0.7363 newton per meter square it does not satisfy the condition because normal shear stress is greater than shear stress of concrete hence we have to provide additional shear reinforcement when we provide additional shear reinforcement <coughs> We have to find the shear force of that reinforcement also. So, Vus is equal to Vu minus Vuc, which is 93.93 km. And we provide two left particles to the in diameter. That is from 6 to 16 and the particles that are taken in it. We find the area of the stirrup that is a bigger 100.53. And we will substitute the formula as we said with 231.851 mm, which I run around with up to 230 mm. Okay, so we will check the minimum spacing. First is uh, 0.752 for 50 mm, next is 300 mm, and the spacing we calculate. We take the minimum value to 30 mm. Now we check the minimum shear reinforcement that is ASV by B and SV greater than or equal to 0.4 by 0.87 FY. We substitute the values and we see that it is safe that is 100.5 is greater than or equal to 63.73. Condition satisfied means it is safe. Now we check for deflection L by D. So since the concept has a simply supported me, L by D should be less than 20 into K1 into K2 into K3. This is a doubly reinforcement. K1 and K2 are the modification factors that we have to take into consideration. K3 is a reduction factor that is only needed for flattening. So K3 value will be equal to 1. So we only need K1 and K2 here. We find the value of Fs that is uh, in the term in figure 4 where there is a graph of modification of factor and in x axis pt and the curve is Fs that is the service load 
point five is F Y N D. Area of cross section of steel required. Area of cross section of steel provided. We substitute the value. We get two thirty three point four three. The I S code. We after checking out at which point it is there, we get K one value point nine. Now we need to check uh, K two. K two is the modification factor in compression side. That is, we get it from figure five, page thirty nine. There we have the x axis as uh, P C. Um, percentage of steel in tension zone is P T. P C is percentage of steel in compression zone. So to find P C, that is the percentage of compression in zone. P C is equal to hundred into A C provided by B D. We substitute the value of A C provided and we get P C value. Then we check the graph and we get K two is equal to one point one five. We substitute and we also substitute the values of N effective and effective depth. And we see that it satisfies the condition. Hence, it is safe. Last but not the least, it's detailing the W reinforcement. This is the detail of the W reinforcement. Okay, guys, I hope you understood today's video. So that was all about it for today. But this is one of the kind. Yeah, thank you.